friends. I'm trying to have a lazy Sunday and just kind of chill because um, you need to chill sometimes. Um, I've been working a lot, that kind of thing. And I've been sort of back and forth between West Yorkshire and London, where I am now, in my beautiful new room. It's a rented room and it's actually got colour on the walls, so I've done that myself. I'm going to post snippets of me sort of looking around. But also, I think, um, what's the thing? The thing is, I've got footage from previous me moving. I'm going to just whack it all in here. Just snippets of kind of things that I've been up to through the move. Um, because whilst at the moment artistically I'm mainly focusing on trying to make things that are like long and good so writing a novella and I want to make it into a um, a video or a serial video and I don't want to just give you know just like be putting all my energy into like kind of half assed YouTube videos that aren't really anything I make them like this and post them but additionally like the process of doing this, for me, I find it quite therapeutic because using picking up a camera, thinking what what in my life can I film, what do I want to talk about. Well, it's a really good way for me to get focused and motivated because my default setting might be like a bit depressed, a bit like alright, so fucking pointless. Why do like there's no point in bothering, no one cares. Um, a bit heavy hearted. Whereas picking up a camera is like a light, fun thing to do and it invigorates you and you kind of see, you start seeing things in you, which is a cliche and that sounds like some kind of advert for an app that's going to waken you to the world around you via your smartphone camera. But it kind of does work. So that's what I'm doing. All right, dickheads, I've got the pyjama top on and today um, I am going to be decluttering my shit. So, this is my room. What is happening is I am moving to London on the basis that I found like the a crazy cheap room in a house with like nice people that I already know um, and the landlord's sound. And but I'm working in Leeds as fine art lecturer and I'm really happy and I did it despite all the doubt and self-sabotage etc um, and basically I just really want to use this opportunity to like con marry method my life well not con marry completely because con marry is basically where you look at every single thing that you own and think like does this bring me joy and if it doesn't you just fuck it off I'm not going to be quite that extreme, but I think I'm just going to like get rid of loads of stuff um, because it really weighs me down. My intention is to just like eliminate indecision in my life um, because I'm extremely indecisive and I get like existential angst about everything, like what what to wear in the morning. So I'm thinking that if I like if I sort my wardrobe by like outfits rather than individual items then I can just pick some off a hanger and but the hanger will have all the outfits on so I don't have to decide yeah anyway I'm gonna go and do the attic first this room is a lovely room but with an amazing view state if it doesn't do it justice let's say this is just like all my art from my whole not from my whole life but maybe from like GCSE and all my art supplies and it's just been fucking accumulating in these portfolios. There's some horrible paintings from A level, which I think I'm gonna use at some point. So I'm gonna go through it all and throw most of it away and then decide what to keep because it can be sentimental about these things or like, ooh, one day somebody might be interested in them or buy them. There are certain things like look at all those birthday cards. Oh goodness me, so I'm gonna get rid of all that. And I always think like, oh yeah, I might get back into painting, so I'm just going to keep all these like shitty little acrylic paints that are probably all dried up anyway. But, you know, 
if that happens, it's better for me to give them to charity or just give them away now, or at least order them so they're in some kind of accessible arrangement. Da -da. Not that I'm ever going to use any of these, so I could probably just chuck them out. But I'm putting my artwork into like it's just a few things that I want to keep, stuff that fits A4, and I'm going to have like a few things in the folder. It's got some paintings I'm going to get rid of. A level, A level. That's something I'd try to do. Picture of me and Alex. I never finished. Sorry, Alex. And same for me and Daisy. Sorry, Daisy. And I'm getting rid of them. So all the artwork has been reduced to a slim A1 folio, a slim A3 folio. <clears throat> Fucking blind, and obviously you're a hoarder because look at the back of your door. What the fuck is all that? I'm not a hoarder. Declan's just upset me a lot because I've given you a wonderful gift, the gift of being honest with Yeah, you. well I've discovered a lot about myself. So And he, therefore you should be thanking me. He said that if I really wanted to be a minimalist, then I would be able to part with this globe. And that I would think this globe is the piece of shit that it is. For a start, it's upside down. It's not even the right way around this globe. But I really like the globe, and he asked me why I like the globe. And you couldn't answer me. No, I said that I like the reason I like the globe is because when I look at it, when I see it in my peripheral peripheral vision, and the very fact that I know that it's in my room makes me feel like humanity's small, and that I'm just one person on the planet, and that my problems are small, and that there's a whole big world, and everything. Which was an elaborately constructed lie. That was not a lie. That you came up That's with. how I do feel about globes. I've always liked globes. You thought that up off the top of your Declan, head. Declan, I've always liked globes. And I got a globe off Grandad Ron, who I just cried about. Who the fuck's Grandad Ron? He died when I was five or six. His dad's dad. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, who's Grandad Ron? Grandad Ron, I've just burst out crying into tears loads because of this book. Okay. And that. I don't want to get rid of it because... It's 365 stories, a story for every day of the year, so each night, or any night that we fancied it, me and I just used to read the story for the day, and there's a different story for every single bloody day. Sure so is. every single day, you can, you can turn the page to an actual story that's specifically for that day. I did say that you can keep things with extreme sentimental value, you know. I'm not a fucking monster. I'm, not, I'm saying I'm not taking it down to my new life in London, but I can leave it here yeah. at my parents' house. If something's got genuine sentimental value, that is enough grounds, usually, to keep it. What, so you think I can keep the 365 if stories? If it has as much sentimental value as you're attributing. Well, I just cried! Well, then, yeah, keep it. But well, what about the friggin... You what? can't apply that to everything. Yeah, but Antidote's Atlas, right? Antidote's Incredible Atlas. Well, exactly, this is where... No, I'm, I'm sorry, but that was the best book ever. It has letters in it with actual letters in it. <gasps> like the Jolly Pocket Postman! Right, you're getting a bit manic now. Stop filming, you're getting manic. Baba. -ba. Look, we're going to sleep in like. It's fucking 20 to 11. Yeah. Can you stop doing You started now? this by looking at my bookshelf and telling me I hadn't thrown enough away and that I was getting rid of all of it. I'm winding down. Yeah, I'm winding down as well. Would you look at that? So, I mean, if I was proper minimalist, I'd actually have just got rid of all of it because I don't paint anymore. Um, and if you need something like a file, a leaf watch file or some paper, then you just buy it when you need it rather than just keeping it all the time in a perfect organ order. Um, <clears throat> I've kept an easel. Mum says she might paint one day, so I guess I'm keeping those for then. So I'm even keeping this lovely box with my perfume making equipment that I haven't used but I've got it all in an order now so I might actually be tempted to use it if um, because everything is in its right place and I can just sort of pick up my alcohol, choose my things, be pet. So, two years on. 
I'm making another non makeup video. I was quite g'd up for this and then my day's not my day's been taken up mostly by like changing over bills and shit and boring organisational stuff. I suppose two years ago I just moved home to my parents in Yorkshire but from Edinburgh and I was on the dole struggling to get a job. Um Eventually I got a job at the library at Leeds College of Art and then I suppose since then it's been a bit of a whirlwind of developing confidence and I ended up doing a teaching qualification, ended up being very lucky and um, some very unfortunate circumstances uh, led to a job becoming available for me which I got um, and I'm now a lecturer. That's what my thinking was like if other people can do it I can um, so I suppose I looked at other people and my automatic thing would be like well I can't do that because I can't <laughs> like I can't be a lecturer because I'm not clever enough or I can't be a lecturer or get you know teach fine art because I'm not successful as an artist and I haven't exhibited enough but I think what like none of you don't need any of that <laughs> in a lot of ways. Like what you need for that, like you look at the job description and what you need is um, a teaching qualification, which is which I could get. You know, I was living at home. Um, I'm very lucky to get to live at home for that period. Near enough commute, commuting distance from Huddersfield University, which offered a teaching qualification, and. Um, Leeds College of Art or now Leeds Arts University uh, where I studied foundation and I went back and sort of approached them about doing a teaching qualification or doing some teaching and they suggested doing a teaching qualification at that point I thought like what me like I, I can't do that and then I thought can you actually see that in this light um, and I thought like well actually like I'm not that bad am I I'm not I'm not that awful and terrible and a failure, like of course I can do it. And this is what I've been telling myself every day um, and I suppose when you, ha when you have a tendency towards depression and all that stuff is so like dominant and every day you usually do wake up feeling like you can't um, and I suppose one of the things I've learned this year is that actually you can. I was going to crack loads of jokes about how I'd been to this, been to this art opening last night and that kind of thing, and um, how I'm like I started doing my room, um, but to be honest, you know, like when you're in. Like I woke up at maybe 5am this morning, cracked loads of jokes, like not cracked loads of jokes at, in, at 5am, but I wrote loads of things to say in this down in my journal. Um, but my brain's just not that quick right now, I feel I feel really kind of, I feel I'm supposed to feel depressed and getting my face on to face the world. I suppose that's one thing I've been thinking about, putting on a face. Because you do actually, you know, every time you get up and get dressed and be a person, you're kind of like performing. You kind of like, oh, it feels that way. Sometimes it just feels like, come on, you can do it. Get up, smile, um, whatever. And I feel like a fucking proper phony. This is really miserable, isn't it? I'm meant to be going to these opens tonight, but I feel really like... I just feel like I don't... dare. <laughs> it's a beautiful uh, oil burner made for me by a very good friend, Katie. Isn't that beautiful? Wonderful seat. Got my piano. 
I got a hanging ivy from uh, Columbia Road Flower Market. Got some shoes from China off the internet. This is um, the yarden. Now this is the loft bed. I fucking built that myself on my own. I went and got it collected with any van. And luckily because I'm a short ass, like I can actually stand up underneath it. I got my desk from the charity shop, the British Art Foundation charity shop. And I carried it back, which took me 40 minutes through Finsbury Park. But I am a meathead, so that's alright. And I got that from the flower market as well. With Alex. I've just been having like such a you know I've been doing the things that you do in London and I've been um, going to the places sorting my room out it's getting really cold so I'm wearing like my hedgehog onesie with the slanket over it so you know a slanket is one of these things that you see advertised for old people and you've got sleeves <laughs> and, a, and a pocket here so you can be like laying down on the sofa or on the chair and have like be and be have a blanket on you but have your hands free. It's pretty self explanatory. What a lovely bathroom. Look the 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 bathware shit, I can't even remember what it's called. It's the same colour as the plants and there's so many plants and there's even a little snail in the corner that I wanna like take it down outside but I just also like quite like the idea of having a pet snail. So living room which is another rarity in London well it's me and my slanket there's just like geraniums everywhere I think these are geraniums there they are yay I haven't got a chance to sort of artify my walls yet but what I usually do is I keep like calendar calendars so I've got some Van Gogh which is going to go really nicely with the blue and yellow walls um, I've got Ansel Adams photography and I've got this like shitty well not shitty um, but I mean who has like I know it's so you don't like copy the photos but who puts a watermark on a calendar like that um, that's from some calendar of the north more more north I just want lots of images of hills in this room of, in London and pines and heather and shit um, such as this for instance you know I've put this here my friend Sean got me that postcard and that's me stood or uh, see if they're on Ilkley Moor I think yeah it's Ilkley Moor isn't it that's from Mount Vesuvius oh that's from I collect these I just like I like having postcards that's the park and Declan there and that's some marbling I did for Huddersfield for a, an event we did that's a nice print etching of St Ives in Bingley the umbrellas Renoir that was the first that was like when I fell in love with art I used to come down to London sometimes when I was like 16 because my nan lives in Basildon in in Essex and she's always like nurtured art and sent me art in me and sent me postcards and stuff and I went to the national I think I stayed in a youth hostel in Soho um because I just I had this little part-time job um waitressing and I was just really into London and I had a bit of money and I'd, I'd come down stay on my own go around galleries sometimes try and buy like a packet of fags and smoke them on my own because I'd had like you know, I was having like an existential crisis because I'd read nausea. But, f like, the, the umbrellas was just... It's even called the umbrellas. Either way, les pa parapluies. Um, I saw that in the National Gallery. And it was like, oh my god. Art. Somewhere. Oh, that's Amy. Amy Bolton. See, there was this, like, postal zine in Edinburgh... Um, and it was like a kind of mail art thing but it wasn't, it was a night and then they gave you a little pouch of postcards and that's one of them, isn't that nice like oil on a pavement a uh, bit of fucking hell yeah, Cezanne, I did know that autumnal, got this at Film House when I worked there in Edinburgh, I thought it was really nice Ophelia, that was another major sort of love of mine as a as an A-level art student and I did lots of imitation paintings of that, my final piece was a um, 
like me drowning basically. Buh, buh, buh. That's another an image of Saint, like the Saint Ives Hill, um, in Bingley, at home. See, I've got all these pictures of Paul Walker because when he died, um, I got really and I'm thinking about it again since I passed my driving test because my I've always I used to love drive like I used to love cars when I was sort of in my late late tens early teens. Um, and then this was further compounded by Paul Walker. Chiang Mai, at one of the temple gardens, bought that there. This was... Somebody gave me this as a card and then I gave it to someone else but I somehow ended up with it back. I really love this image of a snowy street. That's Vlamink. See, I... my, nan got, my nan got me this one. Um, see, look, my nan's just... My nan's ace. I'm seeing her soon. Look, she's always just sent me... That was when I lived in Edinburgh. She sent me little mottos on postcards. Proper wise owl. Um, oh, there's another one. Um, from the Macintosh. Some Macintosh museum. Love that. So I'm going to get these all on the wall, basically. Another Vesuvius postcard. But I need to, like, curate, curate the order of my bedroom, you know. I'm not stuck with my art at the moment, but I'm a bit stuck because a lot of it's going to involve, well I need to go and edit my novella, I want to publish it, well that's really hard and I don't really know how you go about that, I've just emailed agents and emailed publishers and that was a few months ago, I haven't really heard anything back, um, obviously you meant to wait like four months or something, well I've heard, I've had rejections, Will never be added to my rejections folder because I keep a log of all my rejections. Um, in case they ever do, like, you know, get successful, you give like a motivational talk to students or something, you say, I had 3,000 rejections before I got the show or the, the book published, and it's really empowering for everybody involved. Um, yeah, so. Basically, I mean, I keep, I'm, I'm talking like, I feel personally like I need to get my arse in gear and get on with my art, but to be fair, I've fucking started a new job, Um, like, I've finished a teaching qualification, started a new job, which I've been doing four days a week at the moment, and I'm going to be doing less from now, so I'll get a chance to do my art. I've passed my driving test, I've moved to London, and half live in London, and half live up here. I was up in the north and I'm socialising, having fun and I'm meeting new people going to openings so I can just get off my own back a bit Fuck off, Jerry who's saying I haven't done enough and I'm not doing in my art and I'm not putting anything out there and it's all going to be shit and I'm never going to be wow. It's just like, shut up man I'm just chilling Yeah, so you too, whoever's watching, and whatever reason you're watching for, I hope something resonates with you. Reach out through the the uh, inferno of the living, of the the spectacle, the the bullshit, in effect, and um, say hello. Hello from the earth.